Hello everyone, welcome back. The topic for today is acute rheumatic fever from general medicine. Now this video, they will be helpful for those who are appearing for the MDS need and obviously they will be helpful for the ones who are going to give the exam that is the third year students. Now we are going to see this topic under five headings that is the introduction, pathogenesis, clinical feature, investigation and the treatment. So whichever disease you get in your exams, so you need to at least write them under this five main headings. And for the need student, after watching this video, what you can do is you can solve the MCQs related to this topic and ensure you that you will be able to solve all the MCQ related to this particular topic. So starting with the topic, now what do you mean by acute rheumatic fever? Now what do you mean by acute? So acute is when the onset of the disease is sudden or the onset of the disease is in less days. Chronic is when the disease it occurs after like weeks or months. Acute is when it occurs within days to weeks then now what do you mean by rheumatic so rheumatic is any of the various condition which is characterized by inflammation or pain in the muscles joints or the fibrous tissue so now you know about that rheumatic arthritis so rheumatic is nothing but the inflammation or it is pain in the muscles or the joint and fever as we know it is the rise in temperature so basically this disease is nothing but it is like in which there will be inflammation of the joints with the cardiovascular involvement. So this disease, it is a multi-system disorder which is followed by the pharyngeal streptococcal infection. So now you get this disease which is followed after the pharyngitis. So acute rheumatic fever, it usually affects the children of the age 5 to 15 years or the young adults and it is less commonly seen in the developed countries but still this disease, it is prevalent in the developing country. Now we'll start, so that was the introduction to your acute rheumatic fever like what all you need to write for your introduction. Now starting with the pathogenesis like how exactly this disease is caused. So now as we have already said that it is followed by the streptococcal pharyngeal infection. So in this, the individual, they develop the pharyngeal infection with the serotype of group A streptococci. Now over here, this is the individual and he has developed the streptococcal pharyngitis. Now after this, what happens is now this are the bacteria. So this bacteria, it is nothing but the antigen in the body. So what our body does is the antigen. So to kill that antigen, the antibodies, they are produced by the body. So this bacteria, which is nothing but the antigen, it has a cross reactivity with the cardiac tissue and hence our anti-streptococcal antibodies, they mediate the inflammatory reaction in the myocardium, endocardium and the pericardium. That is nothing but this like particular infection, it like affects all the layers of the heart. So in short now, there is this pharyngitis to the patient and after that you will see there is the T cells which is activated by the streptococcal antigen. This bacteria is nothing but the antigen. And because of this antigen, the B cells, they produce the anti-streptococcal antibodies to fight against this antigen. So now this antibodies, it cross reacts with the antigens of the cardiac sarcolemma and the valvular glycopeptides. So this is nothing but over here, there will be this inflammatory process and that will lead to the inflammatory reaction in the myocardium endocardium and the pericardium and with this you will see that the joint and the skin tissues they are also affected due to this tissue cross reactivity and because of that you will see that rheumatic like reaction in this particular disease. So basically this antigen it travels through the respiratory tract and it reaches the cardiac tissue. Now over here you will see that the tissues which are affected so the layers which are affected of the heart are all. So now if it develops endocarditis, that is it is affecting the endocardium. So you'll see that there will be inflammation, there will be vegetation and you'll also see that the chorea tendini, they become short and thickened. Now what exactly is this vegetation? So we'll see that about in a disease which is known as infective endocarditis properly, like what exactly this vegetation is. Now so you have to remember in this particular thing that if this like inflammatory reaction it is affecting the endocardium then you will see there is the inflammation and vegetation. Now the next is when it is affecting the myocardium. So when it develops myocarditis so you will see that is there is will be presence of various cells that is the giant cells, fibrinoid materials etc. And one important feature of this acute rheumatic fever is you'll see there will be Ashoff's body. So now what exactly is this Ashoff's body? So they are nothing but the nodules which are found in the heart and they are a result of the inflammation. 
So over here, this is the Ashoff's body in the myocardium, which is nothing but the granulomatous structures which is surrounding the necrotic center. So over here, now you can see this in histopathological. So this is nothing but the Ashoff's nodule, which is nothing but a granulomatous structure. Now the next is the when it is affecting the pericardium. So it will develop pericarditis, that is the fibrous pericarditis. So this is about like the complete pathogenesis, like how exactly this acute rheumatic fever it occurs. Now moving on towards the clinical feature of this, that is the third heading. So now in this, the manifestation of the acute rheumatic fever, you will normally see fever, lethargy and anorexia. So these are the basic like features of acute rheumatic fever. And with this, you'll also see the symptoms due to the involvement of heart, joint, skin and the CNS. Now this manifestation, they occur generally two to three weeks after the streptococcal pharyngitis. So you'll see all this like various manifestation after two to three weeks. Now its diagnosis is based on the updated Jones criteria. Now this is a very important question like what exactly is this revised Jones criteria. So now over here you'll have like major criteria and minor criteria. Now in major criteria, you have five criteria that is polyarthritis, then you'll have carditis, then chorea, and the next feature will be subcutaneous nodules. And one more major like criteria is the erythema marginatum. So these are the various major like criteria of the Jones criteria. Now what are the minor criteria? So in minor criteria, you will see there will be fever, then there will be arthralgia, then there will be raised ESR or CRP, then leukocytosis and prolonged PR intervals. So these are like the various major and the minor criteria. And with this major and minor criteria, you will also see there will be this positive throat culture from the streptococci or there will be elevated or increasing streptococcal antibody titer. Now what exactly? So this is nothing but a criteria which was given by Jones to like diagnose this ARF. So now presence of two major criteria. So within this five, if you see there are any two major criteria in a patient, then you can diagnose it as a ARF or you will see if there is one major criteria and at least two minor criteria. So again, that patient will be diagnosed as a ARF patient. Over here, arthralgia is nothing but the pain in joint, which is nothing but a minor criteria of this revised Jones criteria. So now we'll see in detail about all the major criteria. So first we'll start with the first criteria that was the polyarthritis. This polyarthritis, it is an early feature of this acute rheumatic fever and this is seen in 75% of people. So in this, there will be painful inflammatory involvement of the large joints. So over here, large joints, they are involved and this joints, they will be red, swollen and it will be tender. So these are like the various features for your polyarthritis. Now in this, the pain and the swelling of this involved joint. So for example, over here, this joint was involved in this polyarthritis, like for the first case. So you'll see that the pain and the swelling, it will subside or it will even disappear as the newer joints they are affected. So first, this joint is what affected. So it gets like fine. And after that, the other joint, it gets affected. So because of that, it is known as migratory polyarthritis because now the pain it is getting migrated and the next important point in this polyarthritis is now as we have said that this is the inflammation of the joint in this you will see that this inflammation it does not leave to an any joint deformity so this is about the polyarthritis that it is a early feature of your ARF now starting with the next feature that is the carditis so this is the next major criteria now in this it occurs in around 40 to 60 percent of patient and the symptom will be there will be chest pain palpitation and breathlessness so these are the like various features of carditis so when you're doing the examination of the patient so you'll see that the patient he will reveal with the tachycardia there will be presence of the third heart sound then you'll see there will be pericardial rub then cardiomegaly and there will be mitral regurgitation and there will be also caricoms murmur now what exactly this caricoms murmurs are then mitral regurgitation pericardial rub everything i'm going to cover slowly in the further videos like you'll know exactly what all these things are so 
in this like particular disease you have to remember you will see this various things on examination for carditis now in this now we know there are various types of valves which are present in the heart so in this now you'll see the mitral valve it is involved the commonest and then it is followed by the aortic valve so over here now this valves they are affected when there is development of the rheumatic valvular heart disease and this valvular heart disease it is due to the fibrosis and the adhesion of the valve during the healing of valvular tears so now we have seen over here that there will be presence of this carycombs murmurs and this carycomb murmurs presence it is due to the inflammation of the valves and because of this inflammation of the valves you will see there is the development of the rheumatic valvular disease and this will lead to the severity of the carditis in this particular patient now the third major criteria is about the chorea now what do you mean by chorea chorea is nothing but the movement disorder so chorea in greek it means dance now about this like arf chorea you will see that this chorea it is known as sydenham's chorea so this chorea it was named after the physician named thomas sydenham and it is also known as saint vitus dance so now saint vitus dance is in reference to a person so there was a person named vitus and he was a saint so what happened during that time is when this disease was occurring during the early time so the people who were affected by this particular disease so what they used to do is they used to attend the chapels of the saint vitus who was a christian saint and he was believed to have a curative power to this particular disease and because of that it is also known as this saint vitus dance dance is chorea is nothing but it is known as dance and saint vitus is the person who had that curative powers to treat this particular disease at that time so this chorea is characterized by the involuntary purposeless movement of the hand feet and face so in this the person's hand feet and face it will move involuntary purposelessly so now this lycoria it is a late manifestation and it is more common in females now the fourth major criteria is about the subcutaneous nodule so again it is a rare manifestation and it occurs in less than so it occurs in less than 10% patients and over here you will see that there will be nodules that will be a painless firm nodules of a range 0.5 to 2 cm which are found on the extensor surface of the joint so you will see this nodules on the extensor surface so this is again a rare manifestation and the last fifth criteria the major criteria is the erythema marginatum so now again this is a rare like manifestation it occurs in less than 10% patients and they are the nothing but a red macules with a pale center which are seen over the trunk and the proximal extremities so this is again the erythema marginatum is nothing but like this red patches you will see on the patients like proximal extremities or the trunk so that was about the all like major criteria of the revised jones criteria and this was about the clinical features now moving on towards the investigation like how you will investigate or how you will diagnose the case of this acute rheumatic fever so the first like investigation will be the blood examination so in the blood examination you will see the number of leukocyte it is increased so there will be leukocytosis then there will be raised esr then there will be raised crp so this is about the blood examination now the next is you you will take the throat swab culture and that will show the positive for the group a streptococci so when you will take the swab culture throat swab culture so you will see this beta hemolytic streptococci from the throat now the next will be the titers that is your aso titers so that will be increase so aso titers is nothing but the anti streptolysin o titers so in this it will be increase and it will be more than 200 unit in adults and it will be more than 300 units in children and the other test which you will see for carditis specially will be like you will take the chest x ray so in chest x ray you will see there will be cardiomegaly or you will see there will be pulmonary congestion so this is about the chest x ray when you are taking the chest x ray now as the cardiac tissue is involved so you will take this different investigation particularly for carditis then you will take the ecg so in ecg you will see there will be t wave inversion or there will be reduction in the qrs and also we have seen in the minor criterias that pr interval it is prolonged 
and the one more investigation will be echocardiography so these are the various investigation that you will do for the acute rheumatic fever now moving on towards the last part of this particular video that is the treatment of it like how are you going to treat the patient of acute rheumatic fever so first will be the eradication of streptococci now as this is like followed by the streptococcal infection so first you need to eradicate it so this streptococci eradication it can be done with the help of antibiotics so it can be erythromycin or you can give oral penicillin so if you're giving erythromycin so the dose for this erythromycin it will be 250 mg 6 hourly and if you are giving oral penicillin so it will be 500 mg that is twice daily and this will be a 10 day course and alternate to this like oral antibiotics what you can do is you can give a single intramuscular injection of benzathine penicillin G of the like dose 1.2 million units so this is about the eradication like how are you going to eradicate the streptococci with the help of antibiotics. So the next treatment modality, it will be the bed rest. So bed rest, it is suggested for the patient who is having severe carditis and also is helpful in reducing the joint pain as over here there will be pain of the joint. So it helps. So bed rest, it helps in reducing that joint pain. Now the next treatment modality is giving salicylates. Now over here now as the patient is having arthritis. Now in like second year in pharmacology we have seen that aspirin that is your salicylate it is given in the case of arthritis. So over here salicylates that is the aspirin it is given to the patient to reduce or to relieve the arthritis and the dose for it will be 60 to 120 mg per kg per day and it is given for around 4 to 6 weeks and after that it is gradually tapered and the last like treatment modality will be about the steroids so in this the steroids like prednisolone is given to the patient with a dose of 1 to 2 mg per kg daily so this like prednisolone it is given to the patient who is having severe carditis and in this night like, as the patient they start improving so you'll see that the steroids they should be tapered so this is about the treatment modality of the acute rheumatic fever now lastly it there are chances that this disease after you have treated it it can occur or it can reoccur in the patient so like the one more important factor in this is about the secondary prevention like how are you going to prevent it to reoccur so in this you're going to prevent the subsequent pharyngeal infection with the group a streptococci by giving certain drugs so you can give oral penicillin V that is 250 mg twice daily or you can give oral sulfadizine that is 1 gram daily or you can give erythromycin of the dose 250 mg twice daily or there is intramuscular benzathine penicillin G of the dose 1.2 million units every 3 weeks. So this like treatment it is given so these drugs they are given for at least 5 years after the person they like are treated with this ARF. So this is about the secondary prevention which is like commonly asked in the MCQs and even in the VIVAS. So this was all about the acute rheumatic fever and you can find this notes like if this particular notes on my Instagram page too so that you can save it and you can draw this particular diagrams in your exams and this will surely help you to score very good marks. I hope you found this video helpful and if you did then please like comment, share and do subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much.